Hello Wargamers, it's me Callum from Tabletop Banter and uh, today I'm in my kitchen doing another 1000 for 100 list. Uh, it's a very special one today uh, because I am finally able to say I think I've done Orcs. Um, easily the hardest because as many of you are probably aware they um, they are not very many points per model so you have to try and go super elite and that is what I've had to do here. Um, so first of all, I'm going to take you through what I've bought, remembering this is not from Games Workshop, but in fact from Triple Helix War Games, or Triple Helix Games, and there's a link in the description below to that website. So the items that I have bought, I've had to be quite cheeky. I've gotten five uh, packs of the Orc Boys, the little chopper slugger ones, and um, they'll have to be proxied as shooter boys, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. I'm sure there's some modeling that can be done. Um, so I've gotten five packs of the four boys coming to uh, in the region of £22.50, an orc dacker jet for £20, three killer cans for £21 and then six war bikes for £36. Now in this list uh, there needs to be a bit of modelling but that's alright. Um, if that's what you like doing then go ahead and do it, if it's not then I'm sure you don't mind a proxy here or there. Uh, and they're not that heavy to be fair, there's only a couple and I've written, I tried writing a list a few times and I've really struggled to get it right. So um, I think this one is ready for the internet. <laughs> so now that we know what we're buying, it came to £99.50 I think. And um, well let's get started. So HQ choice, once again this isn't a combined, this is a combined arms detachment. Uh, it actually totals 997 points because the orcs are silly and they have annoying numbers. So the HQ choice is a pain boy on a war bike and this is the one you'll have to do a bit of modeling for to make him look like a pain boy because he is one of the regular war bike fellas. Um, I'm sure that's very very easy I and mean, give him a bit of extra blood and swap out one of the weapons for something and to make it look like the Erty syringe and then I'm sure that'll be okay. But the main reason I took him was he confers feel no pain to his unit so I'd have to put him on a bike, and you'll see why later on. Um, it, uh, yeah, it's it's just a good, it's 75 points, so it's really cheap for an HQ, which is kind of annoying because they don't have any massively expensive HQs like some of the other lists I've been writing, um, which has been hard because that's normally where a lot of the points can go. So if you look at other lists, like I've got another one coming up for the Tyranids, where the HQ choice took up a big portion of the 1,000 points because it's easy to do that. Um, so yeah, 75 points for uh, a war bike pain boy who can give Phil no pain to the next unit I'm going to explain, which um, is a knob squad on war bikes, uh, five of them. It, it's 310 points, which you might think is a bit crazy, but oh, it's not three. It's more than 310. Sorry, 360 points. Um, now, obviously, like I've said before, these lists are not optimised. They are purely to be fun and uh, fit in with the 1000 for 100 list idea, where you can get together a 1000 point list that's fun to play for £100. Um, so in this squad, you've got five uh, knobs on bikes. Obviously, there's a boss knob who has a power claw and um, four knobs. Uh, Three of those have big choppers, one of them has a power claw. And then every knob has a combi scorcher. Uh, my thought behind this was they're quick to move, so you just get them up the board and then you don't want to charge them. Right? Because the way to take out knobs, I think, is to charge so you get the bonus attacks in before they can hit you and you try and dish out so many wounds so you can get through them. Well, you don't want to charge a unit with five combi scorchers because that's five lots of D3 auto hits uh, instead of your usual sixes to hit on snap firing. So I thought, give them all combi scorches, that makes them a giant pain to charge. Then, if you're not getting charged, you have five combi scorches. Um, a well positioned uh, bike squad there, and you can dish out a lot of pain, a lot of wounds to uh, many, many things. And uh, the scorcher is AP4 as well, so you're getting through a lot of stuff there. Anything with a 4 plus save is gone, um, which is great. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Oh, what has been wounded, obviously. But um, you, you're going to do that a bit as well. So I think this is where, if you can get this kind of flavor template on a squad that has poor ballistic skill anyway, I mean, that's ideal, isn't it? Mm. So um, 
I'll just turn my phone off, put it down there. And um, yes, yeah, so I think that's a good unit to have. I've also given them the banner because that allows them to re-roll uh, combat attacks, I think. Um, and we're going to move on to our next unit, or well, next two dots of unit, which are two 10-man squad of boys with shooters, and, that's, and then each squad has a big shooter. Uh, my thought behind this was you're going to need something that can hold objectives. Because, uh, you know, if you're playing a Maelstrom of War or even an Eternal War, you want troop choices who can hold objectives. And they needed to be in there to make it combined arms. So I tried to make them expensive with boss knobs and stuff, and that wasn't really working because then you needed to buy more boxes. Um, so I said, fine, 10 man shooter squads. Never really thought about shooters before. I know it's not the conventional way of playing orcs with guns, but my thought is you put them in cover and you sit them on an objective and you hope they don't die. And then if they get in range, then you have the shooters as well. So I think uh, that for me is probably the best way to run it, um, if, if this list, because you've then got some objectives secured in the list, but at the same time, uh, you're not taking up points that need to be spent on more elite things and you're not taking up money that needs to be spent on more elite things. So these 20 boys were the mini packs, the little snap fit stuff, or you could probably, I mean, if you really, really want to keep it cheap, go on eBay or something, but I wanted my list to be new models that you could model and paint from scratch yourself. Um, as I know, that can be a lot of fun. So in this list, I've chosen the, uh, the mini packs off of uh, Triple Helix, which are the little four snap fit models. So that's buying five of those for 20. Um, it saves you a few pounds. I mean, if you want to go like three pounds over the 100 list, get two boxes of 10 orcs because it is only like three or four pounds more expensive. Um, and then you get the shooters. So if you want the full on list, then get the get the actual two, two 10 man boxes and they come with the shooters and the big shooters. And if I was going to do it, I would do it that way because I like my models being as uh, what you see is what you get as possible. So. Uh, but yeah, that's that. I mean, the only real reason you've got there is for objectives. Um, next, in Fast Attack, we have ourselves one Decker Jet, which is very kitted out. Uh, kitted out for more than one reason. Uh, makes the most of having the flyer and um, makes it a giant... It's a giant pain to take down a flyer. You have to really focus on it. And uh, it needed to take up more points. So it's 185 points, which is more than your average Jacker Jet. But for that, you get three twin-linked super shooters, um, which are 36 range, assault three, strength six, AP four. So they can dish out some damage. I know it's still ballistic skill two, but most flyers have that anyway. Um, I then gave it the fly boss rule. So it has ballistic skill three when shooting at jet bites, skimmers, flyers, or flying monstrous creatures, thinking, if there's any way you can give orcs a higher ballistic skill, take it because they're not used to that. <laughs> um, and finally, oh, I gave it fighter ace as well, so it gets to roll off of a special warlord trait table. And a red paint job, uh, which adds an extra inch when they move flat out. So if you're like, if you need them to drop down to hover to take an objective last turn of the game, it gives you that extra inch. It's five points. I think it's worth it to be quite honest. Um, coming on to our last unit now, I think. Yep. Is a three man killer can squad. <clears throat> the reason I chose killer cans were because, or is because, uh, when I played against them in a small 1000 point game, I played against six. And that was really tough. Like, I had a real hard time against those because they were just a pain. You can't take them down with bolt of fire. And being a space marine player, I didn't have a lot else. I had plasma cannons and, and a melter gun, but I couldn't get the melter in range because then I'd be assaulted and torn to shreds. So what I've done here is I've put a three-man killer can squad together uh, with extra armor and grot riggers, so they're ignoring crew stun, crew shaken, and they get it will not die. So they get on a roll of a five or a six, they get a whole point back. Um, and then I gave them more scorches because... I thought if this, if there's one thing I can count on, it's a template weapon, or a flamer template weapon, because then you don't need a ballistic skill, and orcs are iconically bad at shooting. So, take flamers. That, it just seems like the best way to run orcs for me. Um, or, or lots of looters, but again, that's expensive, so you're going you're gonna to struggle with that one. So, I thought, 
I'd give the uh, killer can scorchers and then just get them in combat as quick as possible because then you get the scorcher shot in and you can do a lot of damage at strength five. Um, and they all have can claws, which are plus two strength AP two, which is great. So that's now hitting strength seven AP two. Um, and I think that's a good way to run them. So I think when we look at this whole list together, what you'll notice I've gone for is um, a quite elite list. And you are relying on those few units to dish out a lot of damage, which is very un-orc-like. Orcs is normally hordes. Um, however, I had a tough time against an elite orc list when I played my 1,000 points. Um, okay, it was like my second ever game, third ever game. So I hadn't played a lot, so I didn't know what to expect. I now see the benefits in playing elite armies and also the downsides. Um, the, uh, the big thing for me here I think is because you've got the big bike squad that has feel no pain, toughness 5, 4 up save, multiple wounds, uh, power claws, big choppers, um, and the, the rock rigger for the extra it will not die roll, uh, extra feel no pain roll, sorry. And you've got that going around the board fast. So keep them in cover, turbo boost them, get them into con combat as soon as possible. Try and tie up the big shooter units. Then you've got your boys to hold objectives. You've got the uh, Daka Jet to come on, probably kill a few things, soak up some fire because you need to deal with flyers. Flyers, I think they can dish out a decent amount of damage in two turns. Um, and then whilst all this is happening, whilst there's all this commotion on the board with your, your war bikers and the flyer, and possibly the boys just sitting on objectives, you've got the killer cans trudging forward with their strength seven AP two combat hits and the flamers, and then you just throw them in as well. I think what you're looking at is a mobile army that can put other players under pressure to kill things. Um, and when there's a lot of pressure rolls, you know, you often find the dice don't seem to go your way. So you gotta put them on the back foot straight away by moving the war bikes up their full uh, 24 inches, I think, if you turbo boost. So just get them right up the board, in their face, behind something, possibly. <laughs> Then you're looking at a strong list. Let's say strong, I mean, Orcs are possibly one of the weakest codexes. Not that they're unplayable, don't get me wrong, but they're just not updated, that's all, they're very old. Um, so yeah, I think it's a good, it's a good list. I would not like to go against it, although I have worked on a few 1,000 point lists for Space Marines recently, playing against my friend Harry, and uh, I suppose they've been slightly one-sided, you could say, when you almost table him turn two gets a bit much, but that's what you have for the Librarius Conclave in a drop pod. <laughs> Especially when one of them gets invisibility and then you can dish out a ton of psychic shrieks and stuff. But anyway, that was just, um, that was tough. So I think it might struggle against that 1000 point list, but it's a good list and it looks fun. War bikes, always fun. Flyers, always fun. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else to add to that, really. So thank you very much for watching. If you've got any opinions on the list or anything you'd do differently, uh, comment below. That would be great. And don't forget to like and subscribe. It's the subscribers that make me want to keep making videos, and they are the ones encouraging me to do this new twice-a-week uh, uploads so that I get more content out there for you guys to watch. Uh, so, yeah, it's been me, Callum, from Tabletop Banter. Don't forget, have fun.